Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to Sign Law, the Ambiguous Case. Before we start that, I just want to review with you sign law in general with this example. So Amber and Mateo want to string an internet cable from Mateo's roof to the roof of the summer cabin. We want to find the length of that cable needed. So we're finding a side length from Mateo's house to the cabin. So let's look. We have opposite pairs, 100 degrees and x and then we have the distance between the two and I need to find the angle at the bottom there so I know in triangles angles add up to 180 so I can do 180 take away 100 take away 30 and know that my missing angle here is 50 degrees and now I have opposite pairs so using my opposite pairs here with the side length on top I'll put x on top over sine of the opposite angle 100 is equal to 75 on top over sine of the opposite angle on bottom there. So all I have to do is cross multiply and divide to figure out what the length of that cable would be. So cross multiply sine 100 times by 75 divided by sine of 50 degrees and I know that the cable will be 96.4 meters in length. So that's an example of how we use sine law. What I want to do in this video is investigate what the ambiguous case is. So we're going to look at the side side angle triangle investigation. So what that means is I'm given a fixed side length and we'll just call that eight units. I'm given an acute angle and I could choose any acute angle. I chose 30 because sine of 30 is a nice number of a half. And then I have this side here, this side A here, which is going to be changing. So we're going to investigate how many triangles can be made with these fixed measurements changing this side here. And the base will just depend upon whatever side length A is. So let's go ahead and look at an applet here and I'm going to set it up here with this side length here being at 8 just like I have in my notes so let's make this 8 there we are this angle here is a hundred uh, sorry 30 I could use any angle at all I just use 30 let's take this all the way down till I have just a line segment so if a side a is 0 obviously I don't have a triangle as I start to make it bigger, notice I still don't have a triangle because this side length isn't long enough to reach to the other side. So greater than zero, I just keep going and you see it's getting closer and closer until right here at four, I reach a 90 degree angle. It's perpendicular, which makes that a right triangle. So between zero and the height, which in this case was four, I had zero triangles. So let's record that in our notes. So the values of A that will make us have zero triangles is where A is greater than zero but less than four and that four is actually the height of the triangle. So the first time that we have one triangle is when we have the height of the triangle. So the first time we have one triangle is when the line segment is perpendicular to the base, meaning that it is a right triangle, and it would look like this. So that was when A was equal to 4, with B equal to 8, and the angle equal to 30 degrees. That's the first time that I have one triangle. So up to that point, it was just zero. So zero triangles when A is in between zero and four. Now let's look at what happens when I go past the height. So here, if I go past the height, you can see I start to have two triangles. So you can see base one, base two, it's gonna have two different triangles. And I can make this bigger and bigger until it's going to reach the other side length. So in this line here, B1 is going to reach the other side that's when I'm going to have one triangle. So anytime I had greater than the height, in between the height, like so greater than the height, and up to the other side, I had two triangles. This is the first time I have one triangle when I'm bigger than the height. So let's record that down. 
So to have two triangles, my side A has to be greater than the height, but less than the other side. That's when I have two triangles. The first time I switch to one triangle, after of course when A equals the height, is when A equals to B. And when A equals to B, I have an isosceles triangle. Let's just give that a little sketch. And this would be when B equals 8 and when A equals 8. Then I would have an isosceles triangle. And then we can look at what happens when I'm greater than the other side here. So when I'm greater than a side length of 8, you can see I just have one triangle and it's going to kind of go off the page. So basically any time my opposite side of my acute angle is greater than that other side, I will have and continue to have one triangle. So when A is greater than or equal to 8, I will have one triangle. Now remember those two special cases when I can have one triangle. One is when A is equal to the height, and when A is equal to the height I have a right triangle, or when A is equal to the other side, and in that case I have an isosceles triangle. So let's summarize my results. When I have an acute angle and a fixed side B, the measure of side A is going to determine the number of triangles. Now if A is less than the height, it wasn't long enough to reach the other side, I had zero triangles. When A was bigger than or equal to the other given side, I had one triangle. And the two special cases here, when A is equal to the height, I had a right triangle. And when A is equal to B, I also have my isosceles triangle. Now this case here is what's called the ambiguous case when I have two triangles and that's going to happen when your given side or sorry the side opposite the angle is in between your given side and the height. So this is the ambiguous case. Now it's called ambiguous because it means uncertain. So you're uncertain how many triangles you have and the ambigu ambiguity actually comes from the angle. So why do we have two triangles? Let's look at the cast rule. So because we're talking about sine law, sine is positive in quadrant one and also in quadrant number two. Now because it's positive in both of those quadrants, that corresponds to a triangle like this. In quadrant one, it's a triangle with an acute angle. In quadrant two, it's an obtuse angle, a triangle with an obtuse angle. So since you can have an acute and an obtuse angle in one triangle, that's where the ambiguity comes from. So let's review the different cases again. If I'm giving you one obtuse angle, there's no ambiguity. So again, the ambiguity comes from the angle. If I have an obtuse angle, the only angle left that I can have is an acute angle. If I have two acute angles, there is no ambiguity about the third angle. It has to be an acute angle. But if I have one acute angle, the amb ambiguity is I could have an acute angle here, 65, or an obtuse angle here, 115 degrees. So again, I really want you to take away here that the uncertainty or the ambiguity has to do with the angle. Let's try an example together. So in this triangle, it's labeled DEF, but again, I just use my A and B to denote what I'm given. So angle A just really means the acute angle that you're given, which in this case here is 30 degrees. Side A is the side opposite the given angle, and side B is just the other side. Let's figure out what the height is. So height is B, multiplied by sine of A. So it's going to be 42 multiplied by sine of 30, which I know is 21. So let's run through and see which case I have. So is A less than the height? Well, 24 is not less than 21, no. Is A equal to the height? No. Is side A bigger than or equal to the other side? No. So that must mean I must have the ambiguous case. Let's just check A, which is 24, 
is in between the height of 21 and the other side of 42? Yes. So I have the ambiguous case. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and solve for angle E. So since I'm solving for angle E, angles go on top. So solving for angle E, it will look like this. So sine of angle E over the opposite side of 42 is equal to sine of 30 over its opposite side 24. So I'm going to cross multiply and divide, remembering to take the sine inverse in the last step. So putting this into my calculator, 42 times sine of 30 divided by 24, and then I do sine inverse of that, and I get that angle E is equal to 61 degrees. Now, because I know there are two triangles, that's just one of my possible solutions. So when you have the ambiguous case and you go through and solve, the very first solution that you're going to get is the acute one. So I've got my acute solution. Now I have to figure out what my obtuse solution is. So it will look like this. My acute solution is 61 degrees and my obtuse solution is just going to be 180 take away my acute angle of 61 and that's how I get 119 degrees. So how I know that I'm on the right track is by looking at my calculator and seeing that the sine of 61 is the same as the sine of 119 degrees. So since they have the same value and both angles are possible in one triangle, I know that I've done it correctly. So when you solve it, solve for the acute angle first, and then your second solution will be 180 minus your acute angle. Okay, let's try another one. So in this triangle here, I want to solve for angle Y. I'm given that angle X is 34 degrees, side X is 4, and side Y is 10. So again, let's go through and figure out what type of a case I have here. So angle A is the given acute angle, 34 degrees. Side A is 4. Side B is the other one. And H is equal to B multiplied by sine of A. So that's going to be 10 multiplied by the sine of 34 degrees. So I can put that into my calculator just to figure out what the height is. So putting that into my calculator, I get that my height is, we'll call it 5.6. So let's run through our scenarios. Is A less than the height? Oh, and we get it on the first time. That is true. So since A is less than the height, there are zero triangles possible. In other words, it is not possible to draw, to draw a triangle with these measurements. So that means that you cannot find angle Y. Now let's say for a minute you forgot these cases and you didn't know that there was zero triangles. Let me show you how it would look if you would go through and solve it. Okay, so let's say you didn't recognize there was no solution. So we're gonna go ahead and solve it just like we normally would. So we're solving for angles. So that means missing angles go on top. So we're solving for angle Y, let's just label this again. So I'm going to do sine of angle y over its opposite side of 10 is equal to sine of 34 degrees over its opposite side 4. So I'm just going to go cross multiply and divide remembering to do sine inverse on my last step. Okay and we're doing this because we're not recognizing that it's zero triangles. So Going ahead and looking at this, I would do 10 times sine of 34 divided by 4, and I get 1.25. And then when I do the sine inverse, you can see I get an error. And the reason I get an error is because, again, it's not possible to draw a triangle with these measurements. So when you're doing these questions, pay attention to the ambiguous case. That one will be if the side A is greater than the height but less than the other side. If there's only one triangle, you just solve it normally. If there are no triangles, you can see even if you forget, you're still going to get that error message to help you out. 
So to end this lesson, I just have a question for you. I want to know, how do triangles flirt? Well, hopefully because we're talking about sine law, you can probably see that. So I hope that this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one, which is cosine law.